Welcome to Entabor Institute's video. Today we're going to take a look at the issue of how many iterations do you need to run in a Monte Carlo simulation to get accurate results. There is a common belief that if you increase the number of iterations in a Monte Carlo simulation, you will increase the accuracy of the results. But remember, the accuracy of the results depends on the accuracy of the input data, or in our case, how we define the statistical distributions for cost, duration, and other parameters. So let's assume a case that you are estimating low and high durations for a software development task. Even if you have performed this task several times, it is still impossible for you to estimate accurately if the duration is between 4 and 6 days or between 3.5 and 6.5 days. In this case, the imprecision, or the variance between the actual low and high estimates and your estimate, is greater than 10%. This imprecision is inherent in all estimates for different projects and tasks. Sometimes it may be, be 1 to 5% if you have accurate records and do similar projects. However, sometimes this imprecision can be significant and is one of the reasons why we have difficulty estimating the actual duration of projects. We know this because if everyone could estimate project durations accurately, there would be no reason for us to make this video. No one would visit our website or read our books. So given that there is a lot of inherent imprecision in our estimates, does it make any sense to run thousands of iterations? Well, let's take a look at how much accuracy additional Monte Carlo simulations would add. When we perform Monte Carlo simulations, we calculate mean and standard deviation of project duration. These are the duration results for mean and standard deviation for a very small software development project. As you can see, if the number of iterations is small, there's a significant difference between the results on current and previous iterations. However, after a few hundred iterations, the difference is significantly reduced. In fact, the difference between the standard deviation for 500 iterations and 550 iterations is only 0.4%. The difference between the mean for 500 iterations and 550 iterations is even less, 0.04%. So remember, the imprecision of our input uncertainties is probably at least 10%. So therefore, given this inherent imprecision, we believe that in the real world, it does not add any true value to, to your analysis to do thousands of iteration. This only provides an illusion of accuracy where none truly exists. In most schedules, four to 600 iterations will be a sufficient number Just in case you're wondering, there are two cases where you will need to do more iterations. You have a very rare event that you would like to capture in your schedule risk analysis. For example, an earthquake with a probability of 0.01% per duration of the project. In this case, your number of iterations should at least be 10,000 iterations to capture this rare event. In cases where it is important for you to monitor the results of extreme percentiles, for example, P1 or P99, so right out at the boundaries. If you use distributions with low probability on the tail, such as triangular, you may need to increase the number of iterations to get more accurate results of the simulations. Just in case you're wondering, we define the number of iterations in Risky Project in the Project Options Calculation tab. And there we can set the maximum number of simulations and we can also set convergence, uh, which is a topic that we've covered in a previous video. Thank you very much for taking the time to sit in on our video. If you have any questions about this video or anything else you see on our site, please uh, leave a comment or send us a note. Uh, we'd love to hear from you.